Current Affairs Editor-in-Chief Nathan Robinson, who, off, who authored Why You Should Be a Socialist, eliminated a majority of his current affairs staff before trying to take that move back. In a recent letter, former full and part-time staff members write, quote, yes, we were effectively fired by the editor-in-chief of a socialist magazine for trying to start a workers' co-op. In a Facebook post, Robinson has expressed, quote, regret and concern that, has, that he has created a situation where current affairs cannot continue to exist as he himself cannot do the entire job. I'm still kind of sorting through what I think about this entire situation. I have a few thoughts, but I'm, I'm curious, uh, Kim, for, for your take on this kind of unfolding collapse of current affairs. Well, you know, obviously there's a lot of hypocrisy here. Uh, if you're going to say that you're a socialist and that you're for a lot of the socialist policies, then you're going to run into the situation where a workers cooperative is a very popular idea that is that is pushed by a lot of people in that sort of uh, political philosophy. Uh, Professor Richard Wolff is a big advocate of this. And it's the idea that your workers would run the company, essentially, that it would be sort of this, um, th that everybody would collectively have a say in how the company is run. And for a lot of critics like myself for that sort of sit uh, setup is, you know, if you're trying to run a company on uh, this, you know, on uh, by committee that it's going to stifle innovation. And it's also going to be very difficult. Most people are not really kind of um, set up to be leaders. You know, that's not something for everybody. So, you know, I understand Nathan's position of saying, no, you can't really run my company. I do all the work. But it's really hypocritical when you're pushing out to your audience that this is the best way forward for companies. And I think we can stipulate the hypocrisy and then kind of move from there to the question of what ought to be done about it. Alyssa, what, what was your reaction when you when you heard about this? Right. And I think the way Kim said that was very good. I've kind of I've followed this on social media. I'm fascinated by it. It's the classic case of subscribing to something and telling others you should follow a certain system, but then realizing yourself, shoot, it doesn't work. The reality from what I'm seeing, and I fully disclose I'm not a current affairs reader, um, it's not the ideology I subscribe to, but it does sound like he is kind of the whole show. He writes most of the articles, he is the face of it, he is the voice of it, and then he's got folks under him who are subscribing to his own philosophy of thinking they are as entitled to their opinion, to their way of organizing, to their way of doing things for his company as he is, even though he is the brand. So I think he's kind of following into uh, the, you know, the call it trap or call it what most of us capitalists understand, which is you've got to reward, reward the talent. You've got to make it worth you know, the while of the person who's keeping something afloat and keeping it going. That said, I mean, it just reeks of hypocrisy. I think it's an example of why his approach just doesn't work. And the PR around it is so bad, I think he's going to end up sinking his own magazine. But if you want to get more yeah. into the weeds. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think it's pretty obvious that you know, he handled this absurdly poorly. Like that, I, I think he would even acknowledge that. But I also think the left has to start asking itself whether that means the whole thing needs to be nuked. So when, when so he, he, he effectively attempted to fire his entire staff. Ridiculous. What are you doing? And then he tries to take it back. Also ridiculous. Like this. The, n now we're like you know, in the third layer of of absurd. But he's always kind of been an absurd person in in, in a charming kind of kind of way. And so th at that point, the staff has a couple of different decisions. One, they can go nuclear and and go public, mm -hmm. and and end the publication, uh, or. They can say, you know what? This is a this is a quirky guy. He, on the other hand, he he writes ninety percent of the writes or edits like ninety percent of the stuff in this magazine. Uh, he also noted on on Facebook that he has never taken any more money than anybody else at Current Affairs. So this is not about money. This this was about him deciding that he wanted it to be a hierarchical organization where he could say. Uh, this is what's going to be on the cover for next month. It, th these are the articles that I that I want here, and and uh, they wanted it to be a more a, a workers co-op, a, a more cooperatively run organization. You can you can see it from both sides, but it's not going to be either. It's just going to disappear. And so the left has to ask itself if that's what it wants out of these situations, for there to be nothing. Right. And I would say to the workers who are, you know, protesting or potentially sinking the magazine, why don't they embark on their own? If they think they can do what he's done and create their own version of it, then by golly, go do it. Um, you know, they, we'll see if that's actually the case. He is kind of a 
larger than life figure. You do tend to need someone like that to create a following for brands like this. But rather than tank the whole thing, I mean, my, my unsolicited capitalistic advice to them would be go start their own thing and have it be a co-op. Right. Yeah, you know, and yeah. the and the thing about this also is, you know, this is going to obviously be used as fodder for people who are very against socialism, and they're going to say, "See, see, look at the socialists. They tried their own. Uh, they don't even really want to even live under their own system." And I, this is where, for my perspective as somebody who, you know, I love the Scandinavian model of government. That's what I would prefer the United States to move towards. So, but there's this, uh, you know, there is sort of this more radical, I would say, wing that wants things that do feel more radical to those of us that are just pushing for a lot more social, I, I guess, a mixed economy of socialism and capitalism. Uh, but I, I worry that these sorts of events are just going to sort of paint this picture of, well, all of you are nuts. And all of you prescribe to this this ideology. And now look at what happens to you when you finally when, when your workers actually want what you're what you've been uh, pushing for. And tomorrow on Rising, we have another amazing show for you all. The Hill's Hannah Trudeau discusses how progressives are looking to rebrand after Nina Turner's loss in Ohio. And Team Rising weighs in on the big news of the day. Plus, founder of The Daily Poster, David Sirota, discusses the Sackler family's latest scheme to avoid jail time for their role in the opioid epidemic. And Professor Richard Wolf discusses the child tax credit and SNAP benefits. You won't want to miss it. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to view all of our new stuff. And we will see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.